Ooh, look at me. I'm too mature to drive a Ford Fiesta ST. Two thousand and fourteen Peugeot two hundred eight GTI. If you ever have the inner desire to act like a boy racer, but don't wish to be seen as a boy racer, then this could well be the perfect car for you. Either that, or you are unapologetically a boy racer, but the wife or girlfriend simply won't allow you to purchase something of a hot hatch. Then this could be the car to convince her otherwise. A Peugeot two hundred eight GTI plays the role of the older, more mature brother in a family of hot hatches. The styling is more subtle and sophisticated. The interior is more refined in both design and build quality, and the overall sporty driving dynamics are very much present but not overpowering or raw in comparison to the 208 GTI's rivals of the time. From new, the 208 GTI fetched around £18,000, depending on optional extras, which planted the car in the higher end of the price bracket for hot hatches of the time, around £2,000 more than the Fiesta ST. Today, second-hand examples fetch around five to eight thousand pounds, making them an attractive buy. But let's take a look at the 208 GTI in more detail before breaking open the piggy bank and spending all our hard-earned pennies. The Peugeot 208 was first introduced in 2011. The five-door followed in 2012, and the GTI arrived in 2013. This is the first generation of the 208, also known as the A9, which ran up until 2019 in Europe when it was replaced by the second gen 208. Built on PSA's PF1 platform, which the 207 was also derived from. This time, however, Peugeot have managed to shed around 170 kilos of weight and increase the boot space, as well as the rear passenger legroom, which are nice improvements over the rather forgettable and uninspiring 207. The largest improvement over the 207 is, of course, the styling. Gone is the face of a car that resembled a catfish that was hit in the face with a frying pan in favour of a much more sleek and well-proportioned look. The lines are so much tighter, sharper. The overall form and shape is much more free-flowing and less awkward than previously. The GTI model comes with a sportier bumper fitted with this grille that is unique to the GTI, which is supposed to mimic a chequered flag, which... Uh, yeah, OK, Peugeot, I can, I can see that. The chequered theme continues into the headlights and makes for a nice styling cue. You also get 17 inch alloy wheels, this subtle spoiler, hints of red trim and these GTI badges in which their placement is a nod to the classic hot hatch god, the 205 GTI. There are no in your face body kits, aircraft like wings or oversized exhaust tips. The GTI styling is rather subtle compared to its rivals of the time. Yes, it's, it's very mature. The interior. Oh yes. The interior of the 208 is simply divine. This is where the 208 GTI shines over its rivals. See, Ford went full plastic galore with the Fiesta interior. It didn't really do much with the ST model either. I think you've got some bucket seats with some coloured bits, and that's about it. But Peugeot understands that you want to feel exclusive. You want to be different from all the other trim levels. Feel as if you have something special. Constant reminders that you own a GTI. The bold red detailing lures you into an indulgent space the leather dash sweeps around the infotainment system, contrasted by the red trim and stitching. There's an element of flair and passion. Quality materials coupled with a strong build quality make for an impressive interior. The seats are comfortable and are reasonably well bolstered too to prevent you ending up in places you shouldn't be when cornering. Rear seating is also comfortable, providing reasonable legroom and is tall person friendly. Under the bonnet is a 1.6 litre inline four which is equipped with a small spoolie boy to help aid the horsepower count. This is the THP 200 variant of the Prince engine, which can also be found in the Peugeot RCZ. The Prince engine was jointly developed between PSA Peugeot Citroen and BMW, and doesn't have the best of reputations due to having a timing chain that had a lifespan shorter than Warwick Davis. The THP 200 variant, however, gained BMW's Valvetronic variable valve lift, 
which led to timing chain issues becoming irrelevant. Oil consumption, however, is still prone to becoming unusually high, presenting an engine of questionable reliability relative to modern standards. But reliability aside, the THP200 churns out relatively impressive numbers, with 197 brake horsepower at 5,500 rpm and 203 foot-pounds of torque at 1,700 rpm. The engine is coupled to a six-speed manual sending power to the front wheels. Suspension consists of an independent single wishbone setup on the front and a beam axle on the rear which isn't exactly anything to get overly excited about. The 208 GTI does have stiffer and lower suspension compared with the standard models. The front and rear track is also wider and the GTI gets bigger brakes, so despite what may appear as a lazy suspension effort, the 208 GTI actually handles very well, which leads us nicely onto the topic of driving dynamics. The all-important question of a so-called hot hatch is, how does it drive? Handling is superb and is a huge improvement over the standard model. The car grips incredibly well and feels light. Suspension is firm, but not to the extent that it decimates the ride quality. It is actually reasonably comfortable during standard driving, meaning you can take Grandad out on day trips without the fear of sending him to his grave prematurely. The steering is very sharp and responsive, but being aided by electronic power steering has resulted in next to no road feel at all. Also, this steering wheel is very small. It's smaller than the IQ of a guest on the Jeremy Kyle show. Which, yes, it feels great in your hands and does add to the sporty feel, but the bloody steering wheel now obstructs the gauge cluster, so now you can't see the gauges properly. The whole point of a three-point steering wheel is to create this gap between the rim of the wheel and the centrepiece. This is so you can see through the wheel and, you know, see your gauges. Ah, uh, never mind, Peugeot. Just, just never mind. The six-speed box, on the other hand, is excellent to shift through. The throw is nice and short, as well as being precise. There's a slight mechanical feel as each gear is selected, which is nice. With just under 200 horses to play with, the 208 GTI zips along with ease. It is quick off the line, and the turbo helps provide strong mid-range torque, as well as helping extend the power band. Peugeot claimed at the time the 208 GTI was going to bring back the feel with the 205 GTI that we all love so much, which begs the question, was the 208 GTI the new 205 GTI, or was Peugeot just trying to capitalise on our nostalgia for the 205 GTI, with all these styling cues and claims? The difficulty is, there is so much nostalgia for the 205, that everything else since has been overshadowed by it. OK, so the 206 and the 207 are about as memorable as Bruce Willis's music career. But Peugeot have definitely broken away from producing such dull machines. But has the 208 GTI crept out of the shadow of the 205? It's impossible and unfair to compare the two directly, as modern safety standards and consumer requirements mean that a car that drives and feels close to the 205 can never exist again. But surely the spirit of the 205 GTI can live on. Sadly not. Or at least not in the 208 GTI. This is a great car, but it doesn't live up to the 205 GTI legacy. The handling is excellent, but there is too little road feel. The suspension is firm, but not uncomfortable. The car is very quiet and lacks flair in the way it sounds, although what you do hear from the exhaust is actually real. Thank you, Peugeot, for not installing a fake exhaust note that plays through speakers. Other manufacturers, please stop doing this. Anyway, where was I? Um, yes, the styling is contemporary and sharp, but it's not in your face like a hot hat should be. The 208 GTI is just a little too soft for a hot hatch. It's too subtle to follow in the spirit of the 205 GTI. It's very mature and sensible, and that isn't exactly what makes a hot hatch a hot hatch. Because of this, the 208 GTI never really became an enthusiast's car. You don't see these at car meets. A sea of Fiesta STs will dominate a petrol head get-together amongst other hot hatches, but the 208 GTI lacks in attendance. The distinct lack of driving feel sets the 208 back from its rivals. This does, however, make the 208 GTI an incredibly livable car. You can own a 208 GTI as a comfortable daily driver, or as your only car. 
It has a large boot for a three-door hatchback. You get five seats, although the rear centre seat isn't exactly going to fit Dwayne Johnson all that comfortably. Fuel economy is said to be around 52 miles per gallon, all in all making this vehicle quite practical. Inside the ride is quiet and smooth, allowing for comfortable commutes. Perhaps that's the purpose of the 208 GTI. It allows casual enjoyment of the hot hatch feel, without forgetting the realities of daily life. We as car enthusiasts often become blind to the impracticalities of our pride and joy, or sometimes purely turn a blind eye to these impracticalities because our passion for a vehicle simply outweighs the practical factors in our eyes. But sometimes we become blind to the fact that others aren't able to, or simply aren't interested in putting up with the impracticalities that can sometimes arise when owning an enthusiast's vehicle. This often results in unfair criticism of those individuals and what they drive. Uh, you should remove the back seats for better weight reduction. Your car would handle so much better if it had harder, stiffer suspension. It's too quiet. You need a louder exhaust, bro. On occasions, this gets reflected onto an individual, whereby they are seen as not being into the hobby enough. Uh, they aren't really into cars. Uh, I wouldn't say they're really a true car enthusiast. I guess the same could be said for any sport or hobby. Sometimes people don't want to be a hardcore enthusiast or a seriously competitive sportsman. Sometimes we only want a small piece of the fun, to casually enjoy something, to have a taste, and that's okay. Sometimes we aren't in a position to fully commit ourselves to a hobby, and that's okay. If you want to go balls deep into the hot hatch life, then buy a Fiesta ST, or some 90s ship box that rattles and creaks all over the place. But for those of you who just want a small taste, the Peugeot 208 GTI has you covered. So what's this debacle with the window then? So, Far away. This window is very interesting. I don't know if it's standard or if it's just a broken piece of the car. But the press it goes down perfectly fine. No problems. If I want to get it back up, pull the switch up like with norm any normal car. But it doesn't go away. Well it just stops? Yeah. Well the switch is up and then it just So you have to keep doing that for... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's Prince Carl's for you, isn't it? If I'm, if I'm at a set of lights and my window's down and someone's looking across, I just have to... <laughs> <laughs>